Here we are looking at the 210B DHX-2 sample that was given to me in Taiwan, 29th of December 2023. So, is there any other examples of this type of phenomena? Iron appearing at the top of one of these toroidal, potentially, structures. Probably we need to find ones that are kind of sitting like that on the surface. And there does appear to be odd fragments around that are in line with the uh, the sort of colors we've been seeing. So this one's interesting. It, again, it's kind of got this spiral. I really think it is a spiral now. Okay. And it seems to be coming in at this point. What is this material? Is this mostly phosphorus? I don't know. Uh, but we're going to look at it on the EDX and see if there's anything interesting about the tail here. Now, in the other case, did we see the top of it? I don't think there's any ytterbium. Come on. No time to learn. Don't think there's even zirconium. I think there is carbon, though. So, nothing really out of the ordinary there. Just this formation. These ones are massive and they look like they interacted. This kind of implies to me that they are not kind of growing in situ, that they are moving around and colliding and dying. Looks like this one chopped another one in half. Might even be part of this one. Yeah, interesting as it charged up a little. Definitely in layers. It, it, it almost looks like a sort of outside of a small tornado. Things flying around. to the top of that. What is it? What is it there? Is it just more copper? It's more copper. More of the same. Just much higher concentration of the copper. even distribution of these things. Uh, there's a very black thing here. Let's see what that is. Just a large lump of something carbonaceous. Probably. Why? What is it? So what is, for instance, that? 
titanium. Titanium, interesting. What is titanium doing in here? Hmm. Titanium is the fusion of CO2. Hmm. It's also got some other peaks in there. A little bit of aluminium. A little bit of silicon, a little bit of phosphorus, and negligible amounts of sulfur. Oh, below detection threshold. There's no tantalum. Go away. <laughs> uh, it's not tantalum. Oh, we do that. Definitely seeing some chlorine there. Okay. Copper, titanium. The titanium that's interesting here. Because that is fusion of carbon, oxygen, and oxygen. Do an area on here to see what the average of this kind of material is to find out what that is. It's definitely different. It's quite fluffy as well. Fluffy. Yeah, you've got a bunch of different elements creeping in here. The aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. All at a low level. I'm going to acquire that once more and I'm going to punch those in. So, my question is. If we do a sample area here, what is the average kind of thing going on there? Hmm. So we've got some aluminium in there, some silicon in there, and lots of titanium. Interesting. Where is that coming from? It's very fluffy. I mean, look at that one. I mean, it's 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 like an Oreo. It's just like an Oreo. What's going on with that? Look, look at it. Hmm. Definitely a structure of some type. 
There's this one that's splattered down on the surface. However, I am interested to find out what that is and what that is. More contrast. It's definitely a structure, isn't it? So yeah, what is that and that? We need to find out. Not entirely sure why this came in so hot, but anyway, we will go here and acquire. Zirconium. Now I believe it's zirconium, or is it not zirconium? I think it's phosphorus. You're lying to me again. <laughs> no, Tantalum, don't be silly. Okay, so that is copper. Is it the same story on this one? Maybe. Can I find out? It is the same story. Rather dull. Stop it with the tantalum. <laughs> it's just not tantalum. Very similar. Um, I will check to see what this is. This is a much higher concentration than 40% of carbon. Let's have a look at that. Uh, we will go here and we will go here. It is 55% of carbon. Yep, I don't think there's any cobalt there. I do think there's probably copper. A little bit off. So, very high carbon signature there. These things, they do seem to be carrying along a little white piece of something, you know, pure. It's like they've got their own little friend that comes along with them. Or maybe it comes out of them at the end. What? Oh, what? What's going on? Maybe this is made from whatever that was. It's quite, quite <laughs> interesting. Went for contrast there. I'm definitely interesting. I wonder how many of these actually carry around this little fleck of what that is, maybe it is actually copper. So let's find out what these flecks are. Are they just high amounts of copper? Probably. Yep, <laughs> looks like it. So are these structures capturing copper? Maybe. <laughs> I 
by it. Mass concentration, it's nearly 70% of that. Let's see if you've got a similar thing going on over here. Well, it's still very high. Not surprising, in a copper tube we have a lot of copper. It's weird, weird, weird. Look at that. The way it's kind of like half in, half out. Hmm. Like... Lots of things flying around this one. And many of them are embedded in, so that's 10 microns, so that's five. Right about five. Plenty to study here, though, isn't there? Whatever they are, there's plenty of them to study. I really do appear. What's that? Party over here. Look at this. <laughs> Big party. Yeah. You tend to see these lighter lumps of pure copper strapped on to these. Look, look, wherever. Here, here, here. Look, bits on there, bits on there, bits on there, bits on there, bits on there. But I'll have a look at this area and this one. This one first, I think. Actually, I like the geometry on this one, so we'll have a look at that one first. Um, Get a better focus on that. Oh, no, let's see. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely got divisions around it. Look at that. In the center line. Curious. So we'll go back to the other one that had lots of things orbiting around it. Down here. I'm going to do a map of that. Just capturing a, so capturing a lot of copper, maybe. Just ripping it up. Isn't that what's going on? Maybe, maybe not. A bit like volivons, don't they? You know what I mean? So I think we'll take this over to the SEM EDX.
And I think we'll do a map on this. That might be the most efficient way. Could it be that it is grabbing copper and converting that into carbon? Could that be it? That is kind of what it looks like. And I'm going to look at these specifically to see if they are rich in copper or what. Because it's not detecting other things there. Okay, so... Not anything of real interest there. We're going to continue to look around this very interesting sample. Many, many of our structures here. Now, if these are eating the copper, is it any wonder why the pipe gave in? Again, they just seem to be carrying things around in their center. Don't they? Look at that. What is that? Mostly, they appear to be higher concentrations of copper, like pure copper. But the other stuff appears to be phosphorus and copper and carbon. Curious. I think we know what this is going to be. But sometimes you have to add data. Same, same. OK, there appears to be two things of interest. On this little shot here, this one over here, and this little effects going on in here. What's that all about? What is that all about there? What is going on here? Looks like some stripping material going on there. Odd. Little carbon ball there and copper ball there, maybe. Yeah, well, we're going to have a look at that, I think. So, we'll see if this is a carbon rich ball here. It's very spherical. Ooh, no, it has calcium and it has aluminium. Then. Silica, phosphorus, and sulfur, and magnesium, and it also has copper, as one would expect, and it has iron, and it's a little spherical ball there. It's only two nanometer, two micrometers across. Doesn't have tantalum. Stop it with the tantalum. Uh, sulfur, what's that? Is that chlorine as well? Yes. Wow. It has a good selection, doesn't it? Probably even has sodium. It's got that little bump. That might be the bump of copper as well. Um, yeah. That is quite interesting, isn't it? Look at that. So we will add all of these to the report. Now, that has got iron in it. Crazy. What is this black splodge here? Let's have a look at that, I think. And we'll look at that. And we'll look at this white splodge here. And then we'll look at the standard material in the background here. Well, 
no real prizes for the first one, except it isn't tantalum. <laughs> very, very different signal. Look, look at the difference between that and that. This sphere here, sphere, has got all of these elements in. Iron and calcium and potassium and chlorine and sulfur and phosphorus and silicon and aluminium and magnesium, all in this sphere. <laughs> it's not spread out everywhere. It's just in this sphere. Whereas this little ball over here is just carbon and oxygen. Sorry, copper and oxygen. I'll let that run for a while. So, the standout thing here is this sphere. This mid-grey sphere that appears to have a wide array of elements in it, including the elements you would expect to start with, but all are typical synthesized elements. This is very interesting. Why is a sphere have all of those elements blended together? Hmm. Why indeed? So here we can see in this long mapping acquisition that there is carbon, aluminium, silicon, sulfur, chlorine, magnesium, calcium, potassium, iron, etc. in this little feature here, this spherical feature. So with that, I'll say thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.